In the previous slides, we showed how to set up the input in the Excel spreadsheet in, in Precision Tree to carry out sensitivity analysis. In the slides that follow, we'll look at the graphs and show how to interpret them. You'll see a set of graphs that are individual charts and tables of singles variables, and they show up in two different ways. One is a sensitivity graph that simply shows how the optimal value changes as a result of changes in the parameter or the cell. A strategy region shows actually the impact on all of the alternatives that are under consideration and see how they change, their expected values change as a result of the change in the variable. Lastly, we'll show two-dimensional strategy region and that allows you to range two cells simultaneously and see how it affects what the optimal solution would be, but it just specifies the optimal solution. Recall that a high-level investment involves a $13 million commitment. When you set up your spreadsheet and you wrote the 13, it's important that you include decimal points because if you don't include decimal points, it'll think it's an integer value and it'll be hard to read the x-axis. So we input 13.00, that's the value. This chart doesn't show you what the original value was, but it shows how the expected value for the optimum solution changes as the value goes from minus 7% below it to plus 7% above it. It goes as low as 12.09, that's minus 7%, as high as 13.91, that's plus 7%. You can see all this information in the table to the right of the graph. Notice that between 13.4 and 13.6, it's a strictly linear. In the table, you'll see it goes from 12.09 to 12.29. And in the right-hand column, it says the output value went from 7.23 expected value to 7.027, then to 6.82, then to 6.62. It's about 0.2 or $200,000 impact for every 0.2 change in the investment cost, and that makes sense. It should be strictly linear. Every dollar increase in investment cost is taken directly off of the ultimate expected value. But notice as it gets beyond 13.4, at 13.51, and you look at the output value, you see that from that point on, the output value, the expected value, is constant at $5.86 million. And the reason that is, is that the optimum solution actually changes somewhere near there. It's not easy to see in this particular graph, but later on when we see the strategy region graph, it'll be obvious how the two alternatives intersect. The left-hand part of the table says the value of the investment, and then it says how much of a change is it compared to the current expected value. The right-hand part of the table relates to the expected value. So if there's a 7 cent increase in the high cost of the investment in a high level of investment, the expected value is $7.23 million, and that is 14.4% higher than the original expected value, which is 632 and then it goes from 7.23 down to 7.02. Again, that's about 0.2, and now that's 11.2% higher than the original expected value. When you get to point number seven, the expected value is 6.0167, which is minus 4.8% below the original expected value of 6.32 million. At the eighth point, it drops to 5.86, which is minus 7.28% of the original expected value, and it stays that way because the optimum solution has changed so that when the investment cost goes to 13.51 million and above, it has no further impact on the expected value because it's no longer on the optimum path. This worksheet relates to the probability that the take rate will be only 30%. That probability was initialized at 0.4. We said we wanted to range it from 0.2 to 0.6, and as we look at the graph, it looks like it's strictly li linear, where the expected value goes from something between 8 and 8.5 million down to a number that is approximately 4.5 million. Now, although it looks like it's an actually a straight line, if you look very, very carefully at the last two points in the graph, you may notice that the slope of that line is slightly less steep than the slope of everywhere else. That will become obvious. The reason for that will become obvious when we look at the strategy region because it turns out that between those two values, the optimum solution actually does change. In the table, you see the, the values that are listed. Because we specify 10 data points, when you split, go from 0.2 to 0.6, there are nine intermediate points. And as you can see, you're adding 0.044 as you go from the first value to the second value to the third value. The original value, 0.2, was 50% of the lower end of the range is 0.2, which is 50% of the original value, which was 0.4. In addition, 0.6, which is the upper end of the range, is 50% greater than the original value, which was 0.4. What is the impact on the expected value? You see it ranges from 8.16 million 
down to 4.54 million. And it specifies that when the probability of the low take rate drops to 0.2, that will increase the expected value by over 29%. If it increases to 0.6, the expected value drops by more than 28%. In this example, we're looking at the variable costs associated with the high investment. The variable cost was specified as $14. And again, it's important to input in your spreadsheet the original data with a at least one decimal place. The high investment alternative was new technology. We weren't sure about our estimates of what the variable costs were going to be. We felt that we could be off by plus or minus 10%. If it dropped by 10%, that would be $12.6. If it was higher by 10%, that would be $15.4. Notice in this graph, there's a clear bend towards the end, and that's an indication that the optimum solution is changing, that we're moving away from the high investment decision to the low investment decision. And once we move on the low investment decision, the line becomes parallel to the x-axis. And the reason is that once we the optimal decision is the low investment. Changing the variable cost for the high investment will have no impact beyond that point. In the table, when it's 12.6, that's a 10% reduction in variable cost. That will yield almost a 10% increase in the expected value, in this case 9.3%. If the change in this variable cost was only minus 7.78%, it was $12.91. The expected value now is $6.77 million, not as much as before, and the improvement over the original solution was 7.24% higher. At the other extreme, when the variable cost for high investment is at $15.09, which is 7.78% higher than the original 14, the expected value is 5.86, and it is declined, and the expected value is 7.24% lower than before. When it goes up to 15.4, which is a 10% increase in the variable cost, the expected value now is 5.86, and that 5.86 corresponds to what the expected value is for the low investment alternative. This example is somewhat different. The variable cost for the low investment, we said, was $27. We had also stated that this was a proven technology, and we felt, we, although we might be off in our estimate of the variable cost, it's only because we thought we might be able to do better than that, but it would certainly be no worse than $27. As it drops, 26.8 to 26, 20, you see the line is parallel to the x-axis. We are at this point changing the low investment variable cost. The low investment alternative is not the optimum solution. So it stays that way until it drops enough so it now becomes the optimum solution. And you can see that somewhere between 26 and 25.8, even more than 25.9 in the graph, the optimum solution looks like it changes. And now the expected value begins a steep increase as a result of further improvements in the variable cost for the low investment. And we see the same thing in the table. In this case, we really want to start at the lowest number, the number 10 at the bottom, because that's our starting point. We varied this number from 0 to minus 5%, namely from $27 down to 25.65. And as you can see, from t points 10 through 3, the expected value stays the same at 6.32. Suddenly at point number 2, when it drops to 25.8, the expected value now is increasing to 6.364. At this point, we now know that the optimal decision is to go with low investment, and therefore any further reductions will cause the expected value to increase. Previously, you've seen a sensitivity graph that simply graph the expected value for the optimum solution. That graph would correspond to the blue line up until the point that's between around 13.5. And then from that point, it takes on the shape of the red line. Namely, the optimum solution moves from the high investment to the low investment. In this example, the high investment was initially specified as 13 million. And we said we wanted to consider varying it by plus or minus 7%, which means going from 12.09 million to 13.91 million. Now notice the decision changes between 13.4 and 13.6. So some number between more than 400000 and less than $600,000 increase in the fixed cost of the investment will cause a change in the solution. This result is actually quite easy to understand. The two decision alternatives have an expected value of $6.32 and $5.86 
in the original data. That's a difference of $460,000. The high investment is preferred over the low investment by $460,000. And every dollar increase in the high investment is directly deducted from the expected value. Therefore, it's not surprising that if the $13 million investment increased to 13 million point four six, the two solutions would be equivalent. The two alternatives would have the same expected value. And once you go above 13.46, the optimum decision will be to go with a low investment. Now you can see the same thing in the data table. This data table has three sets of columns, the input information, how that changes, and then it shows the two alternative decisions, the high and the low, and sees how they vary. If you notice, the high investment alternative is a line not parallel to the x-axis. We're changing a value, namely the investment cost, in that decision alternative, and as that number increases, the expected value decreases, decreases linearly. In contrast, since we're changing the high fixed cost investment and we're doing nothing to the low fixed cost investment, changes in this variable have no impact on the expected value of the low investment strategy and that's why the red line is parallel to the x-axis and when you look in the most right hand part of the table it's 5.86 value everywhere. The change it says is 7.28 percent minus 7.28 percent. That's simply the difference between 5.86 and $6.32 million. In the high investment, we see it starts out at 7.23, which corresponds to a 12.09 fixed investment, and that yields an expected value that's higher by 14.4%. And the way you can tell where the lines cross is when the high investment number drops below the 5.86. And you can see at 0.8, 5.81, Four is the value as compared to 5.86. Therefore, the low investment would be better. However, if it was $6.01 million, the high investment would say. So somewhere between 0.7 and 8 is when the optimal decision changes.